All right, guys, so when it comes to Docker volumes and bind mounts, I wanna show you one last thing. We're gonna make one slight change. It's not required, but it's kind of best practice. So what I wanna do is I have a I have my container still running. Uh, if you don't, go ahead and just run this command again uh, where you have the bind mount and the anonymous volume. And I wanna drop into bash so that we can take a look at the file system. So we'll uh, docker exec dash it app and then bash. All right, so we're in our container and let's do an LS. And so remember, since we have the bind mount, this directory is going to sync with the directory in our container. However, it's a two-way street. So if I make changes here, it's gonna get updated here, right? If I do a new file uh, and I'll just say my file and I do an LS here, right? We can see my file. However, if I create a file within my container, it's gonna add it to my local machine as well. So if you want to create a file, uh, just for demonstration purposes, you can type in the command touch. It's going to create an empty file, and I'll just say uh, test file. So if I do an ls, we created our test file, and you can see the file showed up on my local machine. I want you to think about um, a potential issue with that. Why is our Docker container changing our, our files? Do we ever need, is there ever a scenario where you want your Docker container to actually be making changes to your source code? or any of the files associated with the source code? Probably not, right? It seems like almost like a security issue for it to even allow it to do that, right? There may be certain instances where your application actually creates files on the local machine, and in that case, you might want to allow it, but for the most part, you don't want uh, your Docker container being able to touch any of your files or make any changes to it, because there's really no need to. And so what we can do is, uh, we can take our bind mount that we created, and we can make it a read-only bind mount, which means the Docker container We'll be able to read any of the files, but it can't touch any of the files and it can't create any of the files, right? It's read only. So let's get started on that. We'll exit out of here and I'm going to kill this container. And to make this a read only bind mount, it's very easy. So let's run this command. Uh, where'd it go? There we go. Let's run this. And all we have to do is specify uh, colon at the end of slash app. We do colon R O. Uh, and that implies read only. So we'll hit enter. Hopefully it's running. Uh, and uh, we're going to go and drop into bash to our container. All right. And so now here, well, let's create a file. So we'll do touch new file. And look at that. It says this is a read only file system. It cannot uh, make any changes. It cannot create any new files. It cannot edit any files. Everything is read only. So this is a little bit of a uh, an enhancement that we can make so that uh, it, it protects our source code and it doesn't allow our Docker container to do any kind of funny business with any of our source code. All right, so let's exit out of here. And uh, I'm just going to do a little cleanup. I don't need these files. 